Okay, hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to tell you about a new free add-on I've released called Hold Tools. Yes, I know I'm very creative when it comes to naming things. This add-on contains a collection of different operations I like using in my regular day-to-day -day workflow with Blender. And this includes things for cleaning up blend files, selecting different types of objects, controlling the global lighting strength, as well as quickly decimating objects to bring down the vertex counts so the file sizes are lower when transferring files over the internet. So I'm going to run you through these different panels one by one, and then if you like it, you can go and grab yourself a copy. So at the top here we have the cleanup panel, and you can see in this box here, cleanup operations, we have four different buttons, organize outliner, convert suffixes, purge unwanted data, and deep clean. So we'll work top to bottom. Say that you've spent hours or even days making a scene in Blender, as I've got here, and you just don't have any consideration for organization from the beginning, you'll end up with tons of different objects with all these random names here. And the outliner can get very messy, just filled with all different types of objects, and it's just going to be a nightmare to put these into collections manually. So what Organize Outliner does is it takes all the different types of objects and then creates collections for each of those types. So if I press this here now, and if I close these collections, you can see it's made cameras, lights, objects, curves, and text. Basically, it looks in the scene to detect the different types of objects there are, and then it will make a collection for each of them. And if there's a type of object that doesn't exist in the scene, then it won't create a collection, so it doesn't clutter up the outliner. And as you can see, it automatically puts all those different types inside of the appropriate one. So this is an easy way to quickly clean up the scene, so you don't have to move things into the collections manually, so it just keeps it all nice and tidy for you. Now the next button down is Convert Suffixes. So one of my main grabs with these recent versions of Blender is this naming convention, dot zero zero one two three etc. I don't like how long it is. I mean, I get the idea behind why they've done it. It keeps it consistent as you go down. Basically, the names take up the same amount of space, but I just think it's unnecessary. And I always prefer the underscore versions of the suffixes instead. Although that is, of course, just personal preference. So you don't have to use this if you don't want to. But you can see that if I click the button here, the name suddenly changed to underscore versions. Uh, this isn't just for objects as well, this is for textures, materials, basically every type of data in the scene. And if we scroll down, you can see it's applied to everything. This button as well does take into consideration names that have both suffixes applied. So if I duplicate this cube, you see we've got underscore 1.002. If I press it again, it recalculates everything. What it essentially does is just add the numbers together and see if there's a space available. So let me undo this. So if you want to use that feature, then you can. If there's no one that wants to use it, that's fine. This add-on is basically just designed around my workflow and what I want to use. So the entire thing is just personal preference. The next option down is Purge Unwanted Data. This is exactly the same as going to File, Clean Up, and Purge All. I just think it's in a more convenient spot. Because I find myself clearing node groups and other unused materials and stuff quite often. So I just like having it right there, just one click away. Now the next button along is Deep Clean, and you can see we've got these two arrows pointing up. What it essentially does is all of the above in one go. Because sometimes I've spent ages making a scene, I don't care about organization, I've got tons of loose things that aren't assigned to any objects whatsoever that need to be cleaned up from the file, and I just want to do everything in one go. So I've just reloaded the scene again, so everything is all unorganized again. If I press Deep Clean now, See, it does everything in one go. It adds everything to the collections, it converts all the suffixes, and it will purge all the unwanted data. So there we go, clean and ready to share with other people. Now the next thing I've added is a more advanced version of selection by name. So here you can see select all including, there's a text box and a button that says select all including. So I think you can figure out how this works just by looking at it. If I type in cube and then press the button, it will select all the objects in the scene that have cube in the name somewhere. Now this of course means that you can basically create your own kind of categories just by naming conventions of objects. So just to demonstrate this, if I wanted to take all the pipe objects that are underneath this corridor, going around and clicking on all of them manually would be really annoying because you'd have to kind of get in and then, you know, click in the right spot and it's all a bit of a fuss. So if I type in pipe, provided that I've actually named these objects appropriately and then do select all including, See that if I move this up now, I've got all of the pipe objects already selected. All it took was entering the name and pressing the button. Now you can take this a step further as well, because if you know your objects are going to be connected categorically in some way, say if I click on this detail piece here, you see that the name is pipe detail underscore one. So we can essentially filter down. So if I click this button again, we've selected everything because pipe detail has pipe in the name. But if I add detail here, unselect everything and then select it, you can see that it only selects the detail pieces. So you can kind of filter down the different layers of categorical detail depending on how you name your objects. So I think this is really useful and I like this feature. I'm going to be using it quite a lot. Now stepping down from this, we have a very basic quick selection for different types of objects. So say if you wanted to select all the curves in the scene as I've got here, you would just choose it from the list. 
and press select all type and it will give you all of the curves in the scene. This would be great for if you wanted to bake everything down in the scene, say if you wanted to choose all the curves and then turn them into real geometry, then you could do that easily because this will flag up all of the locations for every curve object in the scene. Again, the same works with every other type as well. If you wanted to find all the cameras, you can do that as well right here. And you'll notice that it unselects everything else when you press it. So if I wanted to find all the text, here we go, all the text objects. Very simple. Now the next one, global lighting, is something I'll come back to afterwards. But right now we're going to skip down to optimization. You see, when I'm preparing files to share online, I need to keep an eye on the file size. And one of the things that really racks up the file size quickly is vertex counts. And I always perform the same lazy operation on objects to bring the vertex count down. And that's just applying the decimate modifier and using like a low ratio. So I thought, why not just put this in a panel so I can do it really quickly? So say if I take one of these side cloth padding objects, we can see that if I look in the wireframe mode, it's got a decent amount of geometry. It's enough to make the shape noticeable. But if I think it's a bit too much to actually transfer in a file, see here in the quick decimation area, we've got 0.1 being my current ratio. And if I press quick decimate, it breaks the object down. So we can reduce the geometry of objects really quickly just by using this. So if you want to quickly optimize your scene for transfer, then this is a good way to do it. One thing to keep in mind is that it won't work with instanced objects yet, but I can always add this feature in the future. Notice that this one I do have instance, and if I press it here, then we get an error. But these are things I can resolve in the future. Also, I haven't added support for multi-object selection yet, but I can also do that in the next version as well. Okay, so to explain the lighting section, I've come over to this new scene and I'm in the EV rendering engine and I've got all these different point lights here. And if you notice, they've got different power values. So the first one has 60, then we have 30, 20 and 110. Now, when you're designing scenes and you're using tons of lighting objects, sometimes you want to increase the overall intensity of the lighting without losing the differences between the lights. So see, I've got quite a delicate balance of energy here with the different colors. The point of this global lighting setting is to let you add or remove different amounts of power to every lighting object at the same time. So it preserves their differences, but it just adds or removes the energy. So if I click to add now, I'm adding five every time. So we've got an overall brighter area here. And if I look back at the object powers, we can see they've maintained the differences. So 115, 85, 75 and 165. So this basically just saves you from going back through every single light source individually and adding those values manually. So we can quickly add or remove increments. And of course you can go backwards as well by adding negative light, but we don't really want to do that. So if I increase the increment to add and then go again, see we're going up and down in larger amounts. So it's just a very quick tool that I think will be useful. One thing that I would like to add here is also control for emissive material lighting. So I can control the strength of the emission nodes inside of different materials. And the reason I'd want that is because I use a lot of emissive lighting in my cycle scene. So that's something that you can probably see coming in the future. So again, this has just been a quick breakdown of this new add-on. It's completely free for you to get. You can get it on Gumroad for free or you can download it from GitHub. On Blender Market, it's $1, just like the Biogen add-on, and that's because they don't allow free products on there yet. But a small amount of the profits made from that will go back towards the Blender Development Fund. And if you're interested in donating to help support my work, then I've left a donate button here inside of the add-on. And if you click on that, it will take you to a page on my website where you can find more information. But I want to give an extra special thanks to my patrons who have allowed me more time to work on these projects. Now I want to take a bit of time to talk more about the Easy BPY project. I managed to make this add-on in about one and a half to two hours. And the reason why is because I was using the Easy BPY module, which is a project we've been working on for about one to two months, I think I've lost track of time. Now on my website, if you go to the home page, and then if you go on down to Easy BPY and you click on the name, it will take you to a special page I've set up to explain the module and also provide a collection of different demonstrations and examples of what you can use it for. Now I'm planning on doing another video explaining this in more detail, but I just thought I'd mention it here in case you want to go and take a look. We're also getting a new puppy that's going to be joining the family. So that's why I've been wanting to crack on with all these different projects, because I'm sure as you can understand, I may be a bit preoccupied when she finally joins us. So yeah, feel free to go and download the add-on. Consider joining me on Patreon to get exclusive behind the scenes posts, resources, and my personal art files. So thanks for watching everyone, stay safe, and I'll see you next time.